You are listening to 87.1 Caroline Radio, KCGM Bakersfield. Hey, everybody, this is Aaron Richmond, and you're listening to Aaron's Opinion, the podcast for blind people where we talk about issues in the blindness community. Aaron's Opinion can be heard almost everywhere you get a podcast, along with YouTube. We're also on Facebook, where I do post a lot of information, Twitter, and of course, Patreon. Welcome back. Today, uh, you know, I was talking to some people in some of my groups and someone wanted to come in basically right now. Um, And uh, his name is uh, Chris and um, he is the current president of the Winchester chapter of the National Federation of the Blind in Winchester, Virginia. Chris, welcome to Aaron's Opinion. Um, I understand that you have quite a story to tell, so I will mute my microphone and go right ahead. Great. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for inviting me into this podcast, and uh, it definitely was a on-the-minute uh, thing to happen to come into, so I'm really excited about sharing my story and how I came into the National Federation of the Blind. Uh, So my name is Chris Walker, as Aaron said. Um, I live in Winchester, Virginia, and I currently serve as the president for our local chapter here. Uh, We have about 15 chapters here in Virginia, so we are one of the chapters in the northwest part of Virginia. So we are located in the Shenandoah Valley area in between the mountains uh, in a rural area. So I um, became blind 10 years ago. It'll be going on 11 years, but I went totally blind at the end of 2009 of November. And I was uh, working and doing my everyday life. And then one day I noticed that my eyesight was blurry and I was a little bit concerned about it. So I made an appointment to go see a ophthalmologist. So I got into the ophthalmologist and they examined my eyes and they basically told me I need to go to a retina specialist like right away. So of course I um, did that uh, as soon as possible. And then once I got to the retina uh, specialist, they told me that I needed to go to the hospital right away. So everything was very quick. And so I ended up in the hospital for about a week and I I lost my left eye Uh, totally blind. And so I said, well, at least I have my right eye. I could still, you know, still do things. But they were trying to figure out what had happened with my left eye. And I had gone on uh, multiple doctor's appointments and things like that. And so I was just kind of blessed to have my right eye. So I left out of the hospital. Then about a week later, I noticed that my right eye was doing the same thing. I was on the computer. And so I said, oh, I need to go back uh, to the doctor. And that's what I did. I went to the retina specialist. So from there, the retina specialist said, oh, no, you need to go back into the hospital. So I was in the hospital for, gosh, almost two months. And they were trying to figure out why I went blind. Um, They had uh, run a lot of blood tests. Uh, They were sending my lab uh, test to different places to figure out what was going on with my eyes and my retinas and what was causing um, this quick uh, loss of eyesight. But unfortunately, um, they weren't able to regain my eyesight. Um, I had tried uh, steroids. Uh, I had been on uh, many eye drops. Uh, It was just very it was such a whirlwind of what was going on in my life at that time at the age of 44 is when I lost my eyesight. So I, uh, basically after that, once I got out of the hospital and they couldn't figure out what was going on, I continued to see the retina specialist, but then, um, they were basically telling me there's nothing they could do anymore and that they don't know what the cause was. So for like 10 years, uh, I, went without actually having an eye diagnosis. Basically, they just said that my retina is detached um, and uh, they don't know. But anyway, so after I had left the hospital, um, I had no clue of where to get help. 
uh, or assistance on being blind, or I didn't even know about uh, blindness. I didn't know there was any type of uh, VR, vocational rehab or rehabilitation for blind people. And I was fortunate enough to um, get with a coworker that I worked with at the airline at the time. Uh, she had recommended me to a uh, rehab services through the state. And at that time, I was living in Las Vegas, Nevada, is where I went blind. So I was working two jobs. So I was working one in the casino and then one in the airline. So from there, I um, went and to get services because I needed to learn how to uh, live as a blind person, how to, you know, do my orientation and mobility. How do I walk with the cane? How do I, you know, cross streets? How do I just live as a, as a person that can't see? And uh, it was really good because I got services pretty quickly and I was able to also learn assistive technology and uh, also learned about um, home skills on how to cook and just do things without, um, without sight and using those techniques and skills that I learned. Um, but anyway, so what happened after that, I started into the services and my, my direction was to actually return to work. I didn't know what I was going to do after that because I had no clue at the time, 10 years ago, how that would be possible. But I, I knew people who were blind that did work, but everyone's journey was different and definitely my journey turned out totally different from what I thought I was going to uh, do uh, as far as going back to work. Uh, so anyways, I ended up uh, deciding to come back um, to Virginia with my partner and we came back to Virginia. Uh, we were both from here. I grew up in Virginia. We both grew up here and our families were here. So we decided to just come back because we needed to be closer to family. We needed the support uh, system, which we didn't have out in Las Vegas. And we were always afraid if something were to happen that, you know, we needed family to be close by. So luckily, um, our families wrapped, you know, their arms around us and welcomed us back home. Uh, we lived there uh, for a while with parents. But unfortunately, um, you know, other things had happened. Um, I don't want to say tragic, but uh, my partner passed away like two months after we got back from Virginia um, from a sudden heart attack. And then like six months later, my cat passed away. So I basically lost like everything. Cause when we left Las Vegas, I just, I, uh, I just mm -hmm. unmuted. I was on mute there for a while. I just said out loud, I just said, Oh my God, you know, that that's, that, that's horrible. That That's that. Oh my God. That's speaking of <laughs> speaking of just sadness and just no luck. I mean, Oh, wow. But there's a good ending to it. <laughs> so there's a good ending to the story. So but you got, you got in the end, in the end, you got a new kitten, right? No, I didn't. Oh, I, didn't okay. I, I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, you I got a dog, were, but I didn't get a kitten. Well, well, there you go. Well, I don't know. You, one cat dies, you get a kitten. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. That would be, well, that's, that's wonderful that you, uh, you know, is your, is your dog a guide dog? No, it's a toy poodle, but I, I'm actually, um, I, uh, did put an application for a guide dog, but I'm just oh, waiting. Oh, I had a guide dog. I had okay. a guide dog. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, yes. So please, so please continue with your, with your story, of course. Okay, great. Thanks. So I ended up back in Virginia and like I said, um, my partner passed away and then my cat passed away, unfortunately. So I was fortunate enough to stay with family for the whole year because I said, look, this was, this was my game plan was to save up my money and be able to move out on my own again, because I did not definitely want to be with family and to burden them. And I knew that I could be independent. So I signed up again for services for the blind here in Virginia. And so I had somebody coming out, teaching me Braille and just daily living things, and, uh, orienta orientation and mobility again. So I ended up, um, a friend of mine had mentioned Winchester and I knew about Winchester and I said, like, well, that's kind of a, small sleepy little rural town <laughs> not a lot of people in it but i was happy because when uh, i went there i met a lot of good people who supported me and 
I really liked it because they were able, I was able to walk around um, where I was living before. It was off a dirt road. It was, uh, there was nowhere to go. So when I came to Winchester, I was like, just so happy to be able to be able to swipe my cane back and forth and be able to walk the sidewalks and be able to go to the stores and the streets and just be able to go out and do things. And then um, I moved in with a roommate and um, I wasn't sure where I was going to go next. And um, fortunately, I found somebody in my life and um, we got together and we've been married for about five years. I've known them for about 10 years now. So um, there was a lot of things that happened between there because I was looking for something to help other blind people uh, in situations that, you know, had stories like mine or, you know, that we could kind of just help each other. And so I called around about the National Federation of the Blind, and I also was checking around with uh, the American Council for the Blind, because I had heard about these two organizations, which I'm, uh, I'm sure they're both great, but uh, I just happened to find um, the local chapter here in my area. I didn't even know they were here until I ran into a blind couple that were here um, sitting at a restaurant, and I walked up to them and introduced myself, and I said, I just moved here. And they talked about that. Yeah, they have a local chapter here. Um, you know, it's sort of like this unknown uh, hidden secret, I guess. But uh, I ended up going to a chapter meeting. And uh, I was very, like, just excited about, like, oh, gosh, there's other blind people in my community. So I basically told them my interest saying, hey, I would really love to go and do outreach and talk to the local community, talk to the local organizations, talk to the universities, talk to anybody who would actually listen and so I could share my story and to help the blind community in Winchester. So I was very fortunate uh, to serve as the outreach coordinator. And then I served that for um, that for a couple of years as the outreach. And then I became vice president of our chapter. So I still continue to do outreach and reaching out to the community. And there's a lot of work in outreach. Uh, there's so many things that you can do to uh, put yourself out there and put the organization out there and let them know what, you know, what you have done with your life, what the organization can do for people who are blind. Um, so then I was voted in as president. So uh, this is my second term. So I'll be serving my third term, hopefully soon. And I'll continue to do the work uh, for the organization and our chapter. So we really uh, have built up a lot of things in our chapter. Um, we were, the main goal was to really outreach. So we started talking to the Lions Club, the Kiwanis Clubs, uh, any uh the nursing facility uh university uh we've had many opportunities to speak at many places and we continue to do outreach uh now we're doing it virtually since we can't do it do the due to the uh, covid virus so we're doing the best we can to still be out there and um bringing awareness so i um also got involved with the state affiliate and i now Along with being the president, I also help with the social media aspects of the uh, for the page for Virginia and also the Twitter and the Instagram and the YouTube channel. So that's the one thing that I like doing. I, I'm very um, a people person. So that was best to fit my needs and the organization. Uh, the NFB definitely has a lot for people who, you know, wherever you may be, um, from, uh, you know, a child to all the way up to seniors, they have different uh, divisions within the National Federation of the Blind. So you just have to find your place and your spot. Um, we, the organization is a very, a very welcoming organization. Uh, they are, you know, I'm going to be honest, they, can get tough on you because they want you to be independent. They want you to uh, basically live the life you want and to be able to be a successful blind person, no matter, you know, if you're going to college, you're trying to get a job, if you're just out there in the community or just doing whatever 
makes you happy and that you're living, you know, and doing what you want to do. And I always believe in giving back. Um, a lot of people helped me as well.